We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Or are we? Oh, yes, we are. We really, really are. But you know what? Today I'm talking about YSL's classic men's fragrances that are no longer on the YSL USA Beauty website. Completely removed. I'm talking about seven fragrances. Seven fragrances that I really, really love. Classic fragrances including Kuros, Body Kuros, Opium Pour Om, Jazz, M7, and then of course, Pour Om, YSL Pour Om, are all completely removed from the USA YSL Beauty website. Anyway, I'm going to let you know about these fragrances and why I think they're worth having if you're a fan of classic fragrances. And if you can find them by searching online to get them, get them now because God knows what's going to happen in the future. Anyway, talking about YSL's men's classic fragrances coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian, and yes, today I'm talking about YSL's classic men's fragrances. Some of the fragrances that I was uh, raised on or grew up with, and uh, just the iconic fragrances that I really, really love. Uh, and sadly, they're disappearing. They're completely removed off of the USA website for YSL Beauty. Nowhere to be found. And the last thing I noticed was Kuros and Body Kuros were completely removed as well from the YSL uh, Beauty website in the USA. So, does that mean they're completely discontinued? Like, done? Finished? No more? Well, there's a little catch. I'm gonna let you know about this, but before I do, if this is your first time tuning into the channel, and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So I said, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. The reason I said that at the beginning of the video is because the fragrances that I mentioned, except for one, are still selling on French uh, beauty website for YSL. You can buy them there, but they're completely removed off of the USA website. So, which typically means it's going to be a lot more difficult to get these at the discounters. They'll still be coming, but not as frequently. Uh, some of them are still selling at the discounters, but I think eventually they'll start, um, you know, slowing down and not have a frequency of finding them on the websites. So if you're fans of these fragrances, might as well stock up or back up now. Um, I just, uh, last summer, and when I heard that it, would, it was being removed, uh, bought three backups of the uh, YSL's uh, Pour Om, I mean um, Opium Pour Om. And then just a few uh, weeks ago when I noticed that uh, Kuros was no longer on YSL Beauty website for USA, I bought three backup bottles of that as well. So yeah, they're removed. But as I said, I did find most of them, every one of them except for one off of the uh, French website. And I, I don't, I didn't go around checking, uh, you know, like the UK website or Italy website. This is a French brand. I checked the USA and I checked the French website. So they're not on the USA and they are on the French. But the first one I want to talk to you about is the first one that I started noticing with that they're discontinuing. It's a Rive Gauche Pour Homme, this one right here. Um, if you go to the uh, USA website, you will notice Rive Gauche Pour Femme on the website but Rive Gauche Pour Homme has been removed for a good three years now. So you want, you, it's really hard to find this particular fragrance. Initially, it was launched in 2003, then it was relaunched in 2011, created by Jacques Cavalier, and this is completely gone. It's not even on the French website, so it's very, very hard to find. I actually have a backup bottle of this in, not a backup, but my actual bottle in the original bottle in the canister. And I also have the intense version of this in the canister looking bottle, the vertical one. But I have a few of these, plus this uh, little juice left in here, and that's all I have. And this particular one, I felt like was a really great, authentic, aromatic, spicy, barbershoppy, shaving cream kind of a smell. Really well done by Jacques Cavalier, a great perfumer who now creates fragrances for Louis Vuitton and Bulgari as well, uh, both under the same parent company, LVMH. But this is like, when this started going away, it was a sad day. I mean, it was already kind of different, a little different than the original canister bottle. 
not too different, a little. That now it's, that it's completely gone, it's it's a sad thing. And then I think this is uh, kind of one of the fragrances that really got me enjoying a, a fragrance that smells like a shaving cream because it really does smell like a shaving cream. Uh, and you know, there's other fougeres out there that don't really smell like a shaving cream. This to me really literally smells like it, and I absolutely love it. I think one of the closest ones to this I would recommend probably is at the Barber's from Maison Margiela, but it doesn't really come too close to it, but it is an alternative for it. But if you can get your hands on a bottle of Rive Gauche, get it. And this, I think, since it is removed off the French website, most likely it's completely, completely discontinued. So it's gone. Anyway, Rive Gauche from YSL, launched in 2003, as I said, relaunched in 2011 in the Square Bottle Collection, and it was created by Jacques Cavalier, and now it's completely gone. The second fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is Pour Homme, YSL Pour Homme, which launched in 1971. This is the only bottle I have. Maybe I should look into buying another bottle. Um, this to me is a very citric, um, sheeper slash fougere fragrance. To me, it kind of reminds me of Scandal by, uh, what's his name, Raja, Raja Parfums. Uh, uh, completely went blank there. Uh, so it's kind of in that kind of citric, uh, tart, aromatic uh, fougere slash sheeper styling that I quite like. It was initially launched in 71 and it came in a different bottle in that kind of vertical thin uh, with a red cap bottle 71 and then relaunched again in this collection in 2011. Initially created by Raymond Shailon, Shailon I think that's how you say it, not IAM but S-H-A-I-L-L-A-N. It's still selling on the French website, so everything else I'm going to talk to you about is selling on the French website. It is not on the men, I mean, in the YSL Beauty USA website. This is lemon, citruses, oak moss, pettigran, mint, and patchouli. To me, it's a little more of a sheeper rather than a fougere, but kind of borders it, kind of reminds me of it. It's that kind of classic men's uh, aromatic, spicy, uh, sheeper-esque kind of a fragrance that's very, very fresh, invigorating, and citrusy, and, uh, you know, uh, aromatic at the same time. Pour Homme, great scent. Let me know if you know this one and if you're a fan of it. Are you a fan of the Rive Gauche? Do you have a bottle? Uh, do you not have a bottle? So the next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is YSL's Opium Pour Homme. Uh, I'm kind of going in the order of what I think this got discontinued or removed from the uh, USA website. So I think this came out um, next or got removed next but I think all of a sudden a lot of them just completely got removed with this one I bought three backups uh, of this actually I only own three bottles this is one of the third backups this is a fragrance that launched in 95 it's the men's version of the very popular women's fragrance opium uh, they did create an eau de parfum of this which I never got sadly uh, it's a long sought after I wish I could get my hands on a bottle but gone. Uh, but this is the men's version that came out in 95. Once again, it's created by Jacques Cavalier. It's still on the uh, French website, so it is still selling there, but definitely not on uh, the USA YSL website, YSL Beauty website. Notes are black currant, star anise, vanilla, tolu balsam, black pepper, cedar, and you know, these notes are great. It's a great spicy take on, you know, the woman's spicy fragrance of opium. That was very, very popular. I think this one was fairly popular as well for a good 10, 15 years. And I think it just went kind of down after that. I think by the time we got into the early 2010s, I think people weren't talking about it. But I've heard great things about Eau de Parfum. I never wore the Eau de Parfum, only the Eau de, Eau de Toilette. And I liked it. And I think this to me now, I bought it in 2021, earlier this year once I knew that it was being removed or had been removed. I think I can tell that there is a difference uh, in the smell. It's it's not def it doesn't have the kind of a substance and the depth to it that it once did. But, you know, as a great uh, fragrance to remind me of what it used to be, I think it's great to have. It's a sad thing that it's discontinued, but, um, oh well, this is all we can get. This is all we can get. If you can get it, get yourself a bottle. And I think since it is on the French website, if anybody you know uh, travels to France or anywhere in Europe, uh, going through you know duty frees, you know ask them to find you these kind of fragrances if you can't get them in the states here, since it is still selling on the French website. Once it's removed off of there, at that time I think it'll be really really complicated to get from anywhere, including the discounters here. But it's interesting that Jacques Cavalier has done multiple fragrances for some really great men's classic. 
YSL fragrances, including uh, YSL Opium Pour Homme. So that is uh, from 1995. And again, as I said, it's not on the YSL USA Beauty website, but it is on the French website. All right, up next, going to YSL's Jazz from 1988. Jazz was one fantastic fragrance from this house. Amazing, spicy, aromatic fragrance. Kind of similarly barbershoppy, but not kind of, uh, you know, the stuff that they had launched in the early uh, 80s, like Kuros, but a little more of a fresher take on it, but really a great fragrance with lots of depth. It, it's interesting that they also came out with live jazz afterwards, but initially in 88, then relaunched in 2011 in the square bottles like this. It's interesting. I'm not sure why they didn't launch Kuros in the in the bottle like this. I think this bottle is pretty iconic. That's why they probably left it in there. And the same thing with um, the poor, the opium pour ohm. Why didn't they move that into this square bottle collection? Maybe the bottle is iconic, but I don't find it as original or iconic as the Kuros bottle. But going back to YSL Jazz, uh, a great fragrance, amazing fragrance that I think you can totally notice if you have a, a vintage bottle from 1988 to this particular square bottle. It's very thin here, but still a kind of a, an image of what it used to be, a lighter image uh, version of the uh, original fragrance. So initially 1988, relaunched in 2011, created by Jean-Francois Laty. Uh, and yes, it is still on the French website and it features notes of coriander, geranium, artemisia, cypress, and patchouli. Interesting, I don't see coriander come up too much, although I see it a little more than something like carnation. Carnations I rarely see in fragrances. I think it's kind of an old school note and it reminds people of old school fragrances. But I really do love coriander and I also love carnation and fragrances. And this one definitely is that coriander, really a great smell. Wonderful, wonderful smell. It's very, very spicy. And if you've ever, um, toasted coriander uh, seeds, oh my god, the fragrance that it will leave in your kitchen is uh, really, really fantastic in comparison to the actual herb itself. In, like, like I said, this in this particular fragrance, it's all about the coriander with that geranium. There's lightly rosiness in here, but it's very, very fresh and spicy. And I think this version in this square bottle in comparison to the original is a lot fresher. The denseness has kind of, you know, been removed uh, because it got reformulated uh, from 1980. 88 to 2011. Anyway, YSL's Jazz, as I said, it's still selling on the French YSL Beauty website, but no longer on the USA website. If you can get a bottle and you are looking for one, get it. God knows what's going to happen if uh, once it's removed from the um, French website as well. All right, next fragrance, it's YSL's M7, one of the very first mass market uh, oud fragrances, and it's targeted to men, and I find this to be very unisex because oud is very, very unisex in, as a note, it's always in unisex fragrances. So uh, this, even though it's targeted to men, as I said, uh, I find it to be fairly unisex. Initially launched at, in 2002 during Tom Ford's uh, time at uh, YSL. Uh, it was created by Jacques Cavalier once again, along with Alberto Morias. Yes, two great uh, perfumers together, creating one of the uh, best fragrances ever made, but sadly it's removed off of the USA YSL beauty website. It is on the French website, as I said, so it's still selling, but God knows the timing. I mean, like God knows how long this particular fragrance will still sell and if it's going to be removed. I find it to be a very easy to wear oud. It's definitely not funky. It's, uh, you know, it's got the oudiness, the woodiness, but it doesn't get funk in there. So you've got lots of oud here with oranges. So there is a kind of a ambery orange uh, citrus touch along with myrrh. So it's resins, the patchouli, that earthiness, the sparkliness, and then of course the labdanum. I feel like the labdanum uh, gives you that ambery smokiness, the orange, together with the myrrh and patchouli. They work really, really beautifully. It's a very easy oud fragrance to wear. And uh, I think there is some differences between the original M7 and this particular fragrance, but I think it's really, really a great designer offering for oud. And again, as I said, it's definitely very unisex for me, not masculine leaning whatsoever. Uh, and it's sad that it's no longer on the USA website. But as I said, it, it's still selling on the French website. God knows how long it'll be there. If you're a fan of it, get yourself a black, uh, backup bottle. I think I have this and I have one more somewhere and that's it. I don't need more. Uh, I, I love it. 
I enjoy it. I love the way it smells. It's great. Uh, it's got kind of a freshness about it, even though it's lots of deep notes. You know, oud and myrrh and patchouli, labdanum. They're all kind of very, very deep notes, but it doesn't act very heavy, if that makes sense. It's a designer after all. Anyway, y YSL's M7 launched in 2002, then relaunched in 2011 in that collection created by Jacques Cavalier and Alberto Moriez, uh, while Tom Ford was uh, running YSL Design House. Okay, the next fragrance I'm talking about is YSL's Body Kuros. It's funny, I've never spoken about it, if at all. Maybe I have spoken it on this channel early on when I relaunched this channel, but this is a fragrance I used to speak about a lot on the older channel, and I just took it out and I sprayed it. This bottle is from 2011. Still smells great today, but sadly it's been removed off of um, the YSL USA Beauty website, but it is on the French website, and I don't know what it smells like, but to me this version smells really, really great. I bought it in uh, 2012, but I believe this bottle was bottled around 2011. It could be 2010, and as I said, it smells really, really great. This was an, uh, like a new take on Kuros, and it's a, kind of a, a take on with resins and eucalyptus and some incense. So there's a resinous, smoky, kind of camphoric touch to it that's quite nice. And as I said, I just sprayed it before I'm shooting this video, and I'm really loving the way this smells. It was a great fragrance. Launched in 2000, never rebottled into a new bottle like the other collection fragrances kept in this bottle because as I said I think this bottle with the original Kuros is a pretty iconic bottle and I think that's why they left it in this collection. Created by, did I say Anique Monardo created it and I used to be a big fan of her fragrances, loved her creations and she did a great job with this. This is probably around the height of her presence as a perfumer. She doesn't do much now although she's been doing a few things here and there but she did a lot around the late 90s and uh, towards the 2000s and on into the early 2010s. Uh, so this is still on the French website as I said it features benzoin, eucalyptus, incense, cedar, clary sage, great resinous, smoky, camphoric, green, uh, you know, aromatic experience. I love it. It's totally different than the original Kuros. So night and day different, but a really great creation. Great men's designer fragrance that's I think slowly going to be disappearing. So get yourself a bottle. This is Body Kuros from YSL from 2000, created by Anique Monardo. And the last fragrance I'm gonna to talk to you about is Kuros, the original, launched in 1981. And as I said, I did this video in the order of, I think, which fragrances got removed off of the uh, YSL USA website. I was kind of going back there over and over again to see, and now this is off of there. Although, when you search uh, there, and the fragrances section for men, you click on it and it says no item by that name here. So they just removed Kuros off of there. This is a very iconic fragrance. It means a lot to me. This fragrance and also Anteus, uh, some of my, some of the best visuals for bottles for me. Uh, going to uh, Macy's and Emporium's, uh, where I used to live in the uh, peninsula here, and seeing those bottles at the department stores, just visually, they, they stood out so much. Totally white bottle and then totally black bottle with Anteus from Chanel. The contrast, you know, kind of like a yin and yang, the opposites. Uh, both big bad boy powerhouse fragrances from the early 80s and very, very iconic. But this came out in 81, created by Pierre Bourdon, master perfumer, very well-known perfumer. And it is still on the French website, but as I said, it's no longer on the USA website. Features civet, aldehydes, patchouli, honey, leather, musk, oak moss, coriander, carnation. There's that carnation and there's a coriander. And again, as I said, carnation, coriander don't come up quite often anymore, if at all. Coriander a little more than carnation, but carnation hardly comes up. Carnation, as I said, uh, to me it smells like cloves because carnations and cloves are kind of similar to me as a smell. Uh, carnation's a little floral, uh, you know, uh, cloves a little more spicy. But this to me is very animalic and very leathery. Uh, and uh, of course it's aldehydic. And for me, this could be, uh, you know, the replacement would be something like uh, Eta Libra Oranges Rien Intense Incense. Because uh, there is a smokiness here. Uh, it's smoky, it's aldehydic, and it's leathery, uh, it's animalic, so I think that would be a great uh, alternative, but I also recently heard that I think Etat Libre de Orange's Rien fragrance is getting discontinued. Is this true? So, I don't know, but this 
to me, there's a it's a love, love or hate it, love it or hate it fragrance now. But back in the day, it was a very very popular fragrance. I really loved it. Dad wore it. I stole sprays from it. And to me, even though it doesn't smell like it used to, I think it's a great reminder of what a great fragrance this once used to be. It's sad it's no longer in the USA website. It's sad all these are removed. Every single one of the fragrances I spoke to you about today are gone. And soon, they'll probably be gone from the French website. Uh, I don't know how long they'll stay there. And that's the reason why I'm doing this video. If you guys are fans of these fragrances, get yourself bottles because Rive Gauche is completely removed, absolutely gone. And God knows how long these are going to be around, if at all. And if they get removed, I think uh, historic uh, fragrances will be gone forever because these fragrances definitely are quite historic in their creations. Tastes change and nowadays it's just one boring fragrance after another where these fragrances are very, very distinctive and have unique smells. And a lot of people want similar fragrances. They don't want a lot of challenging fragrances and I think these can come off very challenging, especially this one where people will be like offended by the smell. I love this, this fragrance. It means a lot to me. Either way, that's the last fragrance I'm going to talk to you about. It's YSL's Kuros, launched in 1981, created by Pierre Bourdon. As I said, it's no longer on the USA YSL beauty website, but it is on the French website. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on these fragrances from YSL. Are you fans of these fragrances? Can you still get them where you are at? Or are you uh, longing to get a bottle and you've run out of them? And now that you know that they're no longer on the USA website, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think they're going to be still around at the discounters or will they vanish away? As I said, Rive Gauche Pour Homme is completely gone. It's very, very hard to get. Thankfully, I've got two backup bottles store it away. But these are no longer on the USA website. So are they going to disappear off the French website as well? I don't know. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.